Okay, hello. Trying to get everybody to clap, raise your hands, come on. Okay, good morning. Good morning. I'm so sorry for the delay, but we are following the Lord on His time, so it's great. It's so nice to see everybody here to praise the Lord. All right. Welcome to Peace Deaf Church, PDC. I want to welcome all of our guests and visitors today. We do have, I am Pastor Jeff, so I am the pastor that is here. Welcome. So good morning. Each morning begins with who? Jesus. That's right. The holy grace and kindness. All right, so we do have a few announcements today. So PDC, it's while it is my church, we do have a lot of guest speakers to come and share different things. So I'm going to have some announcements today regarding these. Next month, September 28th. Oh, one second, I have to find my notes. Here we are. So I'm going to ask this gentleman to come up and explain a little bit about this, what this is. It's like, why? All right, good morning, everyone. Mm, come on. Yay, celebrate Jesus. Let's get some enthusiasm. All right. It is good to see you all. Love you, too. Okay. I do want to give an update, a ex little bit of a, an expansion to help people understand the movie Jesus on September 28th. It's going to cost absolutely nothing. It is free, free admission, plus free snacks. Um, it is very, very important you register ahead of time so that we have a head count so we know how many people for seating and food. So I'm going to have Pastor Jeff hold up the poster. There will be some seniors, some younger people, just absolutely all ages. You can register by coming up here, and there is a code that you can use your phone click on the link it will be a yellow link and it'll pop up the registration page go ahead and fill out the registration and that's it that's all you have to do hit submit and you are registered and that way we can count how many people to prepare to prepare for whether you are on the list or not if you need to you can contact me for free or to come for free um, if you can't register you can still show up that's also fine the more most important point is for as many people to come watch the Jesus movie as possible you are always if you are able to give a love offering to help support this that will always be welcome Some have already registered from other states and from up north, but I definitely think that it is very, very worth your time to come and see this movie. Even if you have to come and stay overnight. If you need a place, we can definitely have places for you to stay. People will open up their houses for you to stay overnight. Okay? So... I'm trying to think, hang on. I believe door four. But if you're not exactly sure which door, go in and I plan on having volunteers at all of the entrances and they can definitely be able to lead you where to go. Once you arrive, you'll get in and get in line to check your name off the registration. If you don't have your name, that's fine. We will have open registration at the door and you can get access so that you can watch the movie. Oh, 
So there was a question that was asked. Are you required to register for every single person attending? Does every person need to register separately? No. When you register, you'll put your name, your address, and how many people are going. So it'll be a tab that will pull down. You have zero, one, two, three. You just pick how many people are going to the movie. And another tab will pop down and ask what type of food you like. So that is simple as that. Very easy registration process. If you have any other questions, I'll be here afterwards. You can always come up to me and ask later. Thank you so much. Do you have another announcement? Oh, one second. One moment, please. Okay, don't forget to introduce yourself. Hi again. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. So I think I had kind of already had that announcement. So DHSC conference in Oklahoma, September 12th, 13th, and 14th. So it'll be a weekend. It's to come for gifts, healing, relaxation, knowledge. You know, so if you've never been there before, I strongly encourage you to join. You are welcome to come for that weekend. Okay. In summary, So before I do that, does anybody else have any other announcements they want to share before we begin our program? Are there anybody else who needs to share an announcement? Okay, so if anybody in this room is feeling hot or if you're not able to stay in this room, we do have overflow seating in the cafeteria in the social hall where we will have the screen set up so that you can also watch um, in a more open space if you're feeling hot in this room. Okay, did you want to make an announcement? No? Okay. If you want to stand and join, you can stand and join in the praise song.
All right. It doesn't matter if we had to delay our start time or not. We will be rejoiceful. Okay, so everybody's going to be really happy and throwing out that joy today, yes? So someone else is saying, the Lord is my shield. All right, so now it is time for silent contemplation and prayers. At the back of your chairs, you will notice these little notepads. If you would like to offer a prayer request, you can put what is on your heart and mind onto the paper. We will collect them and put them in the box for prayer requests. We will go ahead and give a few minutes and we'll turn the lights on for those who need it. And so now it is time for us to collect our love offering. This is our way of saying thank you and giving back to the Lord. Give whatever you feel you can. And we'll have the people coming around to collect any donations.
Thank you for your patience as we collect the love offering to say thank you to the Lord. Now let us pray both in thanks for the love offering as well as for the prayers that we silently wrote for our Heavenly Father. Thank you Heavenly Father for what I have seen and what I know from you to help bring all these people together. I know this is part of your plan for us to worship you, and it is wonderful to see a small part of heaven right here sharing the love. For this, we thank you. We thank you for what you have done and for all that you have done for us for your plan to have sent your son Jesus to earth to get us to understand your plan for us. For your control and your kingdom to be here, we offer these prayers all different forms of prayers from different people, from many people, including those online whose prayers are offered in thoughts. Please answer the prayers for those who need you for health, work, family, for all the different reasons those of us have offered for prayers today. We ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on us and the guest speaker today. For all those here to learn your word and to understand what you are trying to teach us. Also, we ask for you to open our hearts and our minds as we build the relationship with you and continue to build the relationship with you. And keep us safe as we travel. And keep us focused not on the things of the world, but rather on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And it is time to praise. Okay, if you can rise, let's rise.
Thank you. All right, so now it's time for me to introduce the speaker. So it's not me today, it's gonna be a little bit different. Hmm, I think we might need more information. Um, this is another picture we're looking at, but I think we're gonna need some more information. Pop quizzes. So yes, I do like testing you. That's what I normally do, you know, it's kind of a fun time for me. Usually I like to see, you know, someone who knows something, they can come up and see how much they know. So, this is what we're going to do. Moving on. I only have seven questions. There's just seven. So don't worry, there are seven questions. The person that gets the most correct will get up and introduce the speaker and then of course sit down. Very easy, very easy, okay? It'll be fine. My first question is, are you ready? How many of you know Rang? Rensa, can you guys stand up if you know the guest speaker, Rensa? <laughs> All right, so we got pretty many good number of people. Next question. How many have already seen the movie Jesus? What is the name of the character? Does anybody know? So who knows? So a lot of people are sitting down now. So if you don't know the name of the character they played, you can go ahead and sit down. Oh, the interpreter missed it. It's hard. So Jacob 12, 4 through 6. So does anybody know the name of the animal? The mascot. Does anybody know the mascot? Tigers, no. Okay, so we have more people sitting down. Okay, I know. It's a bobcat. All right. All right, now the group has gotten much, much smaller. What was the name of the school that she got the, her PhD from? Does anybody know the name of the school? UNL. No, no, so it's UNL. Where did they start? What state did they grow up in? No, we got some guesses, no. We have a lot of people guessing, no. Got one over here. Hawaii. Okay, who's left? I'm looking for one person still standing. Is there nobody still standing? Okay, this one's tough. Wait, okay, the last question. Does anybody know their middle name? <laughs> if you know her middle name, you must know her very well. Oh, someone's being called out over here. It says, oh, this person doesn't want to say it. They're being quiet. Okay, well, the group of people no one's left standing okay I guess it's up to me then to introduce someone you are already know pretty well uh. <laughs> 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 
So you want to introduce? You have the right to. You can come up and introduce. Oh, no. You're nervous? Are you nervous? Okay. We're not going to make you do it then. All right. So I'm looking. Lillian. Her middle name is Lillian. It's kind of an unusual name. All right. So... Introducing Dr. Rensa Dunn, recently graduated from a lot of hard work and making her way through. Oh, one second. She's still busy. Are we good? Are you ready? No? Yeah, it's over here. Okay. Are you relieved? Yes, your phone is up here. Come on up. Let's go. Wait, someone's saying something. Okay, we're going to turn the house lights on so we can see better. All right. So I would like to, nobody knows you better, and he, the person who does, doesn't want to come up to introduce. So I have asked Rensa to come last time. Mm, I believe it was in 2018. Was that correct? And at that time, Rensa saying yes. And that weekend, I was very excited, and then there was a really bad snowstorm. So I decided, now I'm going to invite her in the summer, because then we won't have a bad snowstorm. And we'll give her, like, several opportunities. So it's great that she's finally here. So I'd like to introduce Rensa Dunn. Yeah, 2018, I wasn't a doctor, so, you know, now is a better time for me to be here as a doctor. All right. So, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen in the future from now. All right, so, hello, I am Renzo. This is my name, signs an X on the ear, because I always have nice big earrings on. I did grow up. And this was my name sign, just R-A. And then I went to Gallaudet, and people in Gallaudet, you know, they have the R-A here, and they're trying to, like, get a hold of me, and they're like, yeah, they're spelling my name. And my just sounded looked too much like R-A. I studied abroad. I went to France. And deaf people here are strong in finger spelling, not so much in Europe. So they had given me this name sign because I was always wearing big, chunky earrings. This was back in 2005 when it was a little bit more popular. Um, and so that's kind of like where my name sign comes from. So this morning, I was trying to get everything worked out and ready, and I do want to thank Lynn for getting all of the tech issues and stuff set up, so I do appreciate you for that. So first of all, time. One of my favorite topics is something with cherishing time, but we always struggle with time. We kind of have to just go through life. And so I want to contemplate this concept of time. Oh, here we go. Now another picture. So many of you recently asked me what, where I studied. So I went to the University of Nebraska not Omaha. I went, it was like an hour away from Omaha. I did live in um, Omaha, so I had to tra travel an hour three times a week to go to college. You know, the university was not every day, so, you know, I mean, I didn't have to drive every day. So it was just three times a week, you know, spring, summer, snow, rain, all of it. Sometimes they would cancel, but, you know, they very rarely cancel for snow. Um, Minnesota, I mean, you guys never cancel for snow. You can get it like the height of a human and you'd still have to go to school. So sometimes they would cancel for just a little bit of snow. Um, usually it would be ice 
and then I wouldn't have to tr make that one hour commute. But I got really used to driving and driving and driving. And I studied interpersonal, you know, so family, health, and communications. That was my major. I really wanted to analyze the deaf identity, what makes us feel so proud to be connected to that deaf identity and why others reject the deaf identity. So I was kind of studying, you know, what makes that proud, pride and what kind of diminishes that pride. So I did my study and I did graduate. So yes, I did finish and, you know, I needed a mental health break, of course, because it's not easy. You know, plus I wanted to spend some time outside and just take a break, a time out and do some traveling. So this is some of my pictures here. After I graduated, a week later, I was off. Went backpacking for six weeks, just by myself, <laughs> traveling to seven different countries. You know, and then met some friends. I have some friends over here in the corner. He can wave hi. Everybody wave hi. Stand up and say hi. There we go. So he did join me the last week. So we were traveling, been traveling. I've been back a few days ago. You know, so thank you for meeting me at the airport and all of that chaos, you know. It's like my body's over there, my mind and heart, I promise, are right here. So this kind of shows where I am now. Okay, I'm trying to look to see. Hello, where am I supposed to be looking for online? All right, sorry. All right, I'm just making sure everything's good. Okay, moving along. We cannot see time. I mean, you have a clock, you know, but that doesn't necessarily actually tell you time. People invented this to help us measure time. It's the measurement of time. So yes, people invented the measurement of time. We did not invent time or create that concept. The sun and the moon did that. You know, we didn't really, you know, like, can't move the moon around and control time, of course, but we can measure it. And in the ancient times, they used a sundial. So how many of you guys know what a sundial or have seen like a sundial? So honestly, I've never seen that. So now it's like, what time is it? You pick up your phone, you look at the time, and you know, back in the sundial days, it says, oh, it's 12 noon-ish. You know, we couldn't say it's like 13 minutes past the hour, 14 minutes past the hour. But again, these are still made up. It's in our minds. We got used to our concept of time. <coughs> and that's not necessarily God's time. You know, we got used to like looking in our car, travel time, how time travels. There's a lot of t clocks around, but that does not function on God's time. God's time is very different. So here's some interesting facts that I have listed regarding time. We have Central Standard Time, Pacific Standard Time. Did you know that the railroad industry created our standardized time zones? They were created for the train system to be Central Standard Time, Pacific East, you know, Time, Eastern Standard Time. You know, the daylight savings time did not even begin until 1916. And we do have some things in the Testament that says one day is equal to a thousand years for God. That shows the difference between the time. So one day for God is a thousand years. 
Good morning. Are you guys up? I mean, I'm going to say this again. This is some pretty profound stuff here. I'm going to have to have a pop quiz. So how many hours? 1,000 hours. So how many would be 1,000 hours? Okay. So what we would experience as a person would be in 1,000 years, 24 hours for God. That's it. So 24 hours for God. And so it kind of like seems to work out, right? You know, that time goes a little quick. You know, like if you have to go, like for example, oh, I was supposed to have a meeting. Oh, no, wait, the meeting's Eastern Standard Time and I was at the wrong time. So then you wind up late. You have to adjust. <coughs> time definitely controls our lives with work and what we do. Everything is related back to time. All right, so do you guys recognize this picture? Where is this? Nope, you're not allowed to answer. I want other people to answer. So it's close. Where is it close? No. No, 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 that's not it. You're close. Does anybody recognize? Okay, oh, you're very close. No. So Czechoslovakia. Okay, you're in the right region. So it's the capital, and the interpreter has no idea how to pronounce the capital, Jubalia, I think. Um, so this is the picture there. All right. So I love castles. You know, I feel like these are frozen in time, and it kind of makes me wonder what w it was like all those years ago where the stones were actually placed, you know, and to see these castles. So the building was concluded about 900 years ago. It was originally created in medieval times and it is made out of stone. It is a 12th century, or was rebuilt in the 12th century, sometime around 1101 to 1200s. And it took a lot of time and money to maintain and to take care of this castle. But we're only seeing the results of this. I mean, you guys weren't there. Nobody helped pick up the bricks and, you know, get the money and support the buildings. Did anybody? I mean, nobody was here. I sure wasn't here. But I really do appreciate seeing the end result. We didn't get to see the process, the time, the money, the effort that all went into creating this castle, but we can all enjoy the beauty of it and the result of it. Very recent. Does anybody know who this is? Yep, it's a runner. Okay, yep. So 400, yep, did the 400. So they are the champion. And so I want you guys to look. They look like a queen, right? The husband's a former NFL player, you know, is a queen, said, oh, you're a champ. We're going to show the next picture. So in 2020, at the Tokyo Olympics, now 51.47, and recently beat their own score and won at 50.37. So it's everybody s saw her success. They saw the win, the crown, the queen, the part where she's succeeding. But nobody saw all of the work that went up to it, all the time. I mean, 2016 was her first appearance. So how many years is that? Let's count how many years. So she was, what, 24? So her birthday, oh, sorry. She just became 25. I guess she just had a birthday. 
So year after year after year, we didn't see her effort. We just saw the end result. And we're here to cheer her on and do her wins. And the years that she worked and struggled, we didn't see it. We didn't see the training. We didn't see how much she had to control her eating and get to the gym and how early she had to wake up, you know, and any of the things that she had to go through. Instead, we only see the end results, her win. But we don't necessarily know the story, the time, the effort that goes into getting her to win. Oh, wait, wait, no, go back. I want the PowerPoint. One moment, please. Okay, we're going to go ahead and... And this is where she wins the race. Now, I can't do a hurdle. I mean, I'd have to, like, really climb over it. My legs cannot jump like that. Yeah, no. But I mean, understand that 400 meters, that's actually pretty long. You know, and she still, at the finish, pushed her chest forward to make sure she could cross that finish line despite her big lead. And everybody celebrates. But I'm thinking, man, her training must have been tough. Can you think of what that training schedule would have been like? And we're just sitting and cheering the end result. All right, so we're moving on. <coughs> How many of you are farmers or have been on farms before? Oh, you were born on a farm. Great. So are you still a farmer? Okay, so you work. Okay, during the farm you had eggs, chickens, all of that, so it's a lot of work on the farm. Okay, you are a farmer. What kind of farm did you have? Cows. How many years... Did you have to get up and take care of the cows and chickens and family? When did your family start the farm? How long ago? 1927. Okay, they started their family farm in 1927. Okay, so we're going to have you stand up. So did anybody, I mean, they're taking care of a farm from 1927. Who else? So you grew up on a farm. And now you have a hobby farm. Okay. And you have 27 chickens. And you get collect the eggs. And when did you start farming? Nineteen eighty six. Selling with the chicken eggs and started with the chickens. Okay. And then you have a hobby farm, then he went back to the chickens. Wow, you just like those chickens. Okay, so there's, yep, many different years people have started their farms. Now understand, farm life is tough. We all enjoy f the results on our plates as we eat. But do you realize who's doing all the work? Who's tilling the soil? who's making sure everything, I mean, you do know that the soil needs to be turned over every year. And then if there's weather, you have to come out and deal with that. It is not an easy life. And yet we just sit down and eat, kind of like here. We come to church. Curiosity, did anybody build this building for church? It was already here. We came and we sat down. You know, in a nice, comfortable chair. We have nice technology. We did not see all the people involved in creating this space. We are simply enjoying this space. And, you know, a lot of times we can't wait to see those results. You know, and that's kind of like what we're waiting for what God can do for us. All right, so I'm trying to get their attention to go on to the next slide. Here we go. I think we already explained this one, so we can keep going. Oh, wait, someone's telling me to wait. What's going on? Oh, okay, one second.
All right, so why do I want to talk about time? Because when you're reading the Bible, we see time. We see numbers. Do we really understand it? No. We understand our experience of time, yes. We understand our timeline. Joseph was in prison for two years. Josiah was king for 31. Sarah's first child, or had her first child when she was 90 years old. So it's like, wow, we have all of these understandings, wow, of time. Do you really understand how long? Imagine, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, that's our calendar, our understanding of time. We understand our understanding of one week, two week, three week, 10 week, you know, how a year goes by. And that's our timeline. But when we're reading the Bible, we feel a disconnect because the time is on God's. And we're, we pray and we're like, oh, well, we prayed and God never answers. God doesn't hear me. Is that true? Is God not listening? No, no. He answers on his time, not yours. But we're expecting like instant response. What we get with like, you know, microwave, we get put our food in, comes out super hot really quick. It's not the same. We need, and, and technology has really lessened our patience. Two, three, four, five hours, people used to pray. And now it's like, okay, two minutes, let's go, let's go, let's go, come on, I gotta have things to do. We're pushing and pushing and pushing our time. But understand, God is not on our time. And sometimes we're praying and praying. Sometimes people lose hope. Does God really hear me? Yes, God is hearing you. But we are expecting these small things to happen or big things in our lives on our time. And we're expecting these giant signs like lightning from above. I mean, yeah, that would be kind of nice if the heavens would just open up and God would say, hey, what's up? And we can say, yeah, thank you for all these things. But that's not how it works. And yet God still shows us the answers in these small little ways that combine show us the bigger picture. We can't sit there and say, hey, look at this bigger picture. Where's this bigger picture? Where's this answer? Where's what we're looking for? There's conflict. There's struggles. What's going on? But we have them in these small little pieces. We're wanting this big picture. And God gives it to them in small little pieces that we need to step back, take a moment, and look at to see the bigger picture. One time... In the Bible, everything was kind of more frozen. Joshua 10, verse 12 through 14. And Joshua looked, and the Lord commented to the town of Gibbon in the valley, in the Elijah Valley. And the sun rose and frozen in the sky, and the night also froze in the sky. And neither moved. And then the sun stayed all day in the sky without moving or setting. So this is one time in the Bible that God said, I'm going to hold time. And then everything kind of went back to normal and normal process.
we have a hard time trusting God. We do. Because people have failed us. We failed each other. It wasn't God. God has not deceived or, or failed us. You know, what we have in the world, that is not God. You know, the world has failed you. People have hurt you. People have hurt your feelings. People have made us lose the trust in God. They're like, why should we trust in him? It's like, how many of you guys fly on a plane ticket? Like, get a plane ticket and fly. I'm sorry, I just like whacked myself with my necklace. This is why it's dangerous for deaf people to wear necklaces. All right, so let's say you spend a lot of money and you buy a plane ticket, yes? Now, how many of you experienced either the flight getting delayed or canceled? Yeah, many hands are raised. Now, how many of you still go ahead and buy a plane ticket after that? Still a lot of hands are raised. Okay, oftentimes that does happen. So if you have money for a plane ticket, then you say, I'm just going to make it up. We're going to go Delta. You know, you get all aggressive. You get over there and says, Delta, where's gate two-way? We're supposed to be at two-way. This is where two-way is. People look. I have my ticket. Well, how much is that? $300. All right. And I want to pick my seat. And we, no, this isn't how it works. The person's going to go up there and they're going to say, trust Delta has a seat for you. You don't get to pick your seat. You don't get to see the airplane. You don't get proof that it's even there, but you're going to trust Delta to have a seat for you. But with God, everybody's like, nope, nope, want to see proof. Where is it? You know, we'll trust Delta Airlines, but we want to see proof of God instead of trusting that his time is different and to trust in God. It's no different, you know. God will do what he says he'll do. That's it. All right, I'm not going to go through all of these bullet points, but I am going to kind of point out the last bullet points. We trust in God in what we pray for and what we expect to see as the results. So it's like, here I am praying for me. This is what I want to see in my life, in my time, on my things. But in all honesty, maybe the answer is yes, and maybe the answer is no. And people will pray and pray, but don't exactly accept the result. God does exactly what he says he will do. David and the temple. You know, so David didn't see it. No. Nope. He did not see the completion of the temple, but the temple was still completed. But he knew that the temple would be completed because he trusted in God's word that it would be and that the promise would be fulfilled. You are the descendants. Do you guys know this? And so what he did is he trusted the descendants to see the results of God's promise. So in the Bible, one of my favorite stories is, it's not in the Bible story, but it's about the underground church in China where a man they had about four people and their man was saying, you know, there was this Bible and he wanted to accept Jesus and he wanted to establish a church in China, which that was such a struggle and thought, well, it was a waste of time. It's going to fail. I cannot s set up a church in China, at least not in that time. But for the children, he taught them anyways. And they kept in China to try to create the church. And now it is a very large church with over a 1,000 people. But it all started with one man with faith, wanting to study the Bible and to 
pre or worship. So he went and started this knowing he was never going to see the end result. The end result being the established church in China. So you see some results in your lifetimes, yes, but you're not going to see the results in your lifetimes for every prayer. So we're going to hold on to this video. I'm going to kind of summarize this. History books and the Bible. So we share these stories. We share these stories and we believe history and you know we say oh yes this is civil war. This is this history. I mean we weren't there. We just trust the history books. But the Bible is the same thing. You know we see and test God and yes these are stories. We know that World War 1 happened. We know World War 2 happened even though most of us were not there. We learned about it in history from it being explained or taught to us. But how do we know if it's true, not true? It's the same thing. You know, God has our story and just to be to, to trust that is honest and that it's true. All right. So life makes sense backwards. This will make sense after a really brief video. What we see in the moment. Okay, does anybody know what they're doing? So yeah, someone said they saw the face on the pink tool. Okay, but in the beginning, did you guys understand? In the beginning of the movie, did you see what he was trying to sew and create? Some people, did you see the face right away in the beginning? No, a lot of people saw a man taking the fabric or the tool and pinning it together. We're not exactly sure what he was creating until the end. That is your life. You guys don't get to see the big picture of your life. You just get to see the pieces that you're currently going through. What God sees. This is what God sees. He sees each one of you as a completed project. You know, we don't see the process, the creating of the picture, the pinning the tool together. That's his process, not yours. But he already knows exactly what it's supposed to look like. So when people are asking where, why, how, all these questions, understand that he's going to make sure that you're in the right place, right time, right situation for the results. And just to be understanding of that. Don't sit there and hold on that. Say, oh, I'm running late. No, God runs on his time. So when we're talking about, like some stories recently, I'm thinking about, you know, the right group of people. You're not here by accident. 
Some of you were planning to come. Some of you showed up last minute. Everybody has a different reason for being here, but you are all here. It's not a whoops accident. No, that's not how that works. So my final comment for the day, and it's from a proverb. Do we have this? So we're gonna move. Oh, no, we're gonna kind of go. I already talked about that, so we can go ahead to the next one. I think the same thing. We can kind of skip ahead. So this is my motivation for you guys today. Psalm chapter 3, verse 5 through 6. I encourage you guys to look at what's going on in your life, be it good or be it bad. I encourage you to go ahead and put that down and sign it out so you can forget about it and keep moving on with your life. And don't think that God's not doing anything for you because that is simply not true. See what's going on in your life. See what you have great things to be grateful for. And then come back to it in the future. And you go, oh my God, I see the process along the way. Because this is what I'm charging for you guys to do. Read the full chapter 3 of Psalm. I really encourage you guys to do that. And remember what you guys are doing now so that you do not forget. You are so dependent on the world that we tend to forget what it is God does for us. So Proverbs, sorry, nope, I'm, I'm reading this completely wrong. One second, I'm sorry. It's Proverbs, not Psalm. I don't know why that said Psalm on there. I, sorry, my apologies. So it's wisdom. Yeah, if you can put that um, back up on the internet one second. Yeah, you can just put the whole chapter 3 up. Yep, the whole chapter. All right, I know you can't really see it. The, the, it might be very small. Oh, we're zooming in. Please do not forget these teachings. This is why I'm encouraging you to go ahead and read all of these chapters. Look not just to, towards your future, but take a look back to see the progress. Write it down, sign it out, and see what God does for you as you look back on your life. And trust in God. And again, I'm going to wrap up by strongly encouraging everybody to read Proverbs chapter 3. This is one of my favorites. Um, we're going to end in a respectful way, kind of tying up in a video and then I'll be done. All right, so we're going to go ahead and play this video. I think, yes, that is the correct video. All right, and we're going to turn the lights down so those inside can see the video a little better. One moment, we're going to turn on the captions. Oh, one moment. Please hold. We're trying to figure out the captions.
Remember, don't lift up the world and think of things on the world's time, but on God's. Thank you. All right, it is a little hot in here, so hope you stay cool. Okay. Wow. Make sure we say thank you to the Lord for Rensa today. That was such a beautiful message this morning. So please afterwards thank the Lord and go and, you know, give Rensa, you know, uh, you know, so now that she's, you know, view life backwards. She'll understand if we don't say thank you to her today. So it's everything in his name, in his time. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, 
yet they cannot fathom the work that God has done from the beginning to the end. So again, praise be to God. Just to let you know that we are going to continue our monthly guest speaker series next month. So I'm not hiding the groin. Someone's, yep. So we will be having Bobby McCoy next month, September 15th. Oh, wait. Rance is walking away. Where is she going? Wait. Would be an honor for you to lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Oh, cool you down a little bit. It's super hot. Well, it's hot under all of these lights, you know. All of these lights are just super hot. All right, so we'll go ahead with the Lord's Prayer. Do I want them to stand, sit? All right. <laughs> Everyone can copy me. We'll begin with the prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. What a blessing for all of you before you head home. May God go before you to guide you. May he go behind you to encourage you, with you to be a friend above you to watch over you and within you to give you peace. Our closing prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your message through Rensa today. Thank you for what we are learning and all that you have taught us Thank you for understanding that time is not on your scale, your plan. And again, we ask you to be with all those who have asked for a prayer tonight. And we give you the moments we can to pray and contemplate your glory and to seek you out. We are here seeking you the relationship with you. Ask us, or we ask you to protect us as we walk through the world to keep us safe, as keep everyone safe as they go back home to their own places to stay in honor and glory and thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day. And thank you for being with us 24-7. And again, I say the words 24-7, but understand we know that it is your time we follow. Again, we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God bless you all.